How to form a single member limited liability company. Find out the steps you should take to form a single member LLC and why this legal corporate structure can be better than a sole proprietorship depending on your state, sector, and goals. Keep in mind though that you first need to make sure your business isn't prohibited from existing as a limited liability company in your state or any other state in the union. Watch now. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the, the awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka. <laughs> Let's roll. Today, we want to talk about how to form a single member li limited liability company. The first step is you learn, you need to learn how to form an SMLC, a single member limited liability company. Even though LLCs were originally conceived as, they were conceived of as companies with, with multiple members, nowadays, every state has recognized the need to allow people to form an LLC with just one member. Now, having said that, in most states, there are certain professions that face restrictions or additional requirements regarding the formation of any LLC, including single member LLCs. More sp Let me just kind of give you a d some kind of uh, detail here. If you work in a field such as medicine, law, accounting, interior design, architecture, or engineering, you probably won't be allowed to form a standard LLC in your state. Instead, you will need to form what most states call a professional limited liability company or PLLC. In the union, as of the date of this show, only one state, California, does not permit PLLCs. So if you're in California, your option, your only option for that matter, is to form a professional corporation or PC instead. All right. So from P, a lot of uh, if you are in a designated profession, you can only form a PLLC, except California, where you have to form a PC. Now, the specific services that are considered professions vary from one state to, to the next. So you need to sort of um, inquire with your state department and find out exactly what's really happening when it comes to legal structures of ALC in your state. I'll give you an example, New York. New York lists more than 30. If you go to the, the website of the, the Secretary of State of New York, they have there a list of more than 30 relevant professions i'm talking acupuncture massage therapy interior design or architecture law and they have those in those 30 professions you can only have a plc now generally to form a plc you must do two things you must be able to show that you have the required state license for your profession and you need to get approval from the relevant state licensing board to form the company. Besides, you will need to carry a sufficient amount of malpractice insurance. Very, very key, folks. This is the limited liability protection of a single member PLLC with because this if you don't have the malpractice insurance, the limited liability protection of a single member PLLC will not protect you from your own professional malpractice. Now, folks, at this juncture, let me quickly give a, a caveat or just give a disclaimer here. We're not providing any kind of legal advice here. This show is an infotainment show. Our team conducts research. We report and we give you the results, the results based on our research. If you need specific and bespoke legal advice we advise you strongly to contact an attorney or any other legal expert who can help you understand your personal situation or your company situation all right this is very important so having said that i'm just trying to cover my butt here and, and the butt of the whole uh, the whole team here so going back to what i was saying here you to form a plc remember that plc is just an equivalent of smlc so a professional limited liability company is just an equivalent of single member LLC if you happen to be part of a designated profession. 
so you need to show that you have the license for instance if you want to practice as a, as a cpa as a you know as a certified public accountant you need to have a cpa license from the state of new york for example you need to get approval from the the accountant the accounting board of the state of new york you need to carry a sufficient amount of malpractice insurance if you're an auditor for instance so if stuff happens you can be covered so there are also a few types of businesses that are not allowed to form an smlc now the most important among these businesses is financial services which includes banks and insurance companies so banks and insurance companies are banned from forming smlc so if you're a bank and that make that kind of makes sense think about it how can a bank say you know i'm owned by one person you know i'm just one person i'm a single member lc no so having said that if you're looking to form a set an smlc as a subsidiary of a financial services corporation in which case you will need significant expert legal and accounting assistance this will not be an issue all right i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition we are talking today about how to form a single member LLC. so in the first section of the show i just kind of explained to you the distinction to have between plc and smlc right so you have professional limited liability company and single member lcs now let's talk about the, the third the, the second step here you need to choose a business name so if you have to register your smlc with the state you need to give it a name now remember though that you have to be very careful about choosing the name i mean choosing the name can be a fun experience but you got to be careful you want to make sure that the name you provide does not conflict with the name of a pre-existing business that's already registered in your state right because this and, and there are there are very easy ways to check that out you can go to the website of the uh, secretary of state of your state and they have a database where you can search for existing names and you can make sure that you're not having the same name because what will happen is if you have the same name your application your filing will be rejected so to avoid rejection you'll need to do a search of business names already registered in your state as, as i said this is usually a simple process and if you have some kind of doubts go on the internet go on google right google should be your friend right now use google or bing and trying to find out if the name that you're looking for has already been taken right now remember though that in some cases including where your business may potentially compete with other businesses in many states or nationwide a more thorough research may be necessary in that case you might want to pay a third party to conduct that research for you because not everything is on the internet not everything is available on the internet right so you might want to just uh, have pay 50 bucks or 100 bucks to a company that can do that sometimes you, you, those companies are involved also in due diligence so they perform something called due diligence so they can help you step number three make things legal right this is at least one necessary task in forming any single member limited liability company so you want to file articles of incorporation or an equivalent document the names the names differs from states to states in some states for example in massachusetts it's called a certificate of, of organization so it could be articles of incorporation or not, not incorporation sorry it's the articles of organization so the articles of incorporation will be will relate to a c corporation or an s corporation but here we're talking about a limited liability company so we are referring to articles of organization so you want to file those doc, that document with the proper state official and that's usually the secretary of state now before you do that you must make sure your business is not prohibited from existing as a limited liability company in the first place what i'm trying to say here is that you want to make sure the the purpose of your business is legit it's not an, an illegal activities it's not in, in um, any kind of a illegal activity that based on your profession or the the core business that your state agrees to that remember it also that you can actually you can actually register an alc an sm alc in a state where you don't live in you don't have to live in the states where you you filed up the paperwork 
I mean, the United States is a single is a single entity, so you can really be in New York, for instance, and file an SMLC in Texas. As long as you have, you can follow the procedures there, right? So, assuming you can form your business as an LLC, filing articles of organization is just one of an area of tasks that you'll need to take care of when starting your company. Now, remember, you also need to choose what you need to choose a management structure for your SMLCs. And it's, it's great, it's always great to have an operating agreement as well. We have an entire show committed to operating agreement and you might want to double check that. It is great. An operating agreement is very important whether you have a multiple member LLC or a single member LLC. All right, I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous. And uh, if you love the clarity and quality of the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel and turn on the notification bell. We really appreciate that. We're trying to expand our our viewers, our viewer base, our listener base here, and also share this content, comment, and like it. Number four, step number four, you want to get an, an employer identification number. What is this? This is really the equivalent of a company's social security number. This is the number whereby the IRS can track you and they want to make sure you're paying your fair share of taxes, right? And this is also what state tax authorities are using to track to track the the earnings and losses of your business. So whether your SMLC is required to have an EIN will mainly depend on how it's been taxed and whether it has employees. Now, more specifically, SMLCs by default are treated as what the IRS calls disregarded entities, so they do not file separate income tax returns. Instead, the single member is considered self-employed, so if you file that, you are paying taxes on business on uh, business income as part of your personal tax return. So when you file your 1040 by April 15 of every year. You're going to transpose, you're going to transfer the business income, the business you, the income you earn from your SMLC onto your 1040. That's why a single member LLC or a multiple member LLC, those two entities are considered pass through entities because the taxes are not paid at the business level. Unlike a C corporation, they are paid at the individual level, right? So. The thing is that the IRS calls your calls an SMLC disregarded a, a disregarded entity because again that entity does not exist in the eyes of the IRS. It does not exist. That's why it disregards it. It does not consider it as an entity. So you pay taxes on its earnings on your personal tax return. Now you will still need an EIN to file the required federal employer taxes with the IRS. Right now, there are other reasons why you might need or want an EIN, even if it's not required by tax law. Banks, for example, generally require you to have an EIN in order to open a business account. In addition, companies with which you do business, they may require an EIN to process payments. Right? Some states, including including Illinois, including Texas, New Mexico, and Nevada, they require their all ALCs regardless of federal tax classification use an EIN on their state tax returns all right now number five and this is the last part here you want to take care of other important stuff so besides choosing a name and a management structure writing um, an operating agreement obtaining an EIN filing articles of organization and preparing an operating agreement like, like I said earlier there are other tasks you'll need to complete when forming a new SMLC. So you need to have uh, you need to set up business bank accounts. You need to take care of your accounting. So you need to have proper business record keeping, bookkeeping. You need to get insurance. This is very important, especially if you are hiring people. You then you want to have workers' compensation, and you want to obtain any necessary business licenses. And this is one reason why you need the EIN too, because the two, some of the, the licensing boards across the country would ask you for an EIN before, before granting the licensing application. 
all right so this is pretty much it folks i really appreciate your attention today and uh to kind of wrap this up let's just give you a recap here how to form a single member limited liability company number one learn how to form an smlc two choose a business name three make things legal four get an employer identification number five take care of other important stuff i will see you next time but until then remember stay marvelous